stepped into the spirit right now, you can step into the spirit again. One more time, somebody shout the name of Jesus. Now, first off, I need, I need, I need, we, we need to change some understanding. Is this okay? We're, we're going we're gonna to get there. We're going to change some understanding. Brother Webb, sometimes before God can bring us into a place of spiritual warfare, God has to change the way we operate in our own understanding. When you get into a service and God starts pulling some things out, you need to start getting excited. See, the devil wants you to go, oh, here we go again. God's wanting you to go, come on, get ready. Oh, it's getting real quiet. You're going to sit on me. We're going to keep going. When God starts pulling some things out, what he's doing is he's saying, you don't need this to go to the next dimension. You don't need to go back to the next dimension. You don't need a fist to fight the devil. But if you give me this, I'll impart to you. I'll impart to you a greater authority. I'll impart to you a greater understanding. I'll impart to you a greater revelation. And when you see the devil, you'll begin to say, get thee behind me. You have no right. You have no authority. You have no ability. You're coming down. When Israel went into the promised land, says, if I can get just a little bit of monitors up here, whatever you do back there, that's fine. When God sent Israel into the promised land, it was not for them to be defeated. The promise or Canaan's land is not a type of heaven. There will be no giants and no harlots in heaven. It was a place, a type of the place that God wanted to take his people. Moses takes him out of Israel of Egypt. Joshua the Lord begins to speak to him. And he says to Joshua 1 and 3, Every place that the, the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilder, from this, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, and to all the land of the Hittites, somebody say that's the enemy. And in the great sea, going down to the sun shall be your coast, and there shall no man be able to stand against you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. In Joshua 9, he goes and he begins to tell you that they had to fight against Lebanon, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pizzerites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, all of them. Israel had to go against. So the understanding is that we are in a battle. If you do not understand that, then you've already lost the war. We're going someplace. I just need you with me. I want someone to lift their hands right now and begin to bind the spirit of distraction right now. Lift your hands. Come on. Come on, lift your voice, everybody, all across the sanctuary. Lord, begin to bind it right now. Remove it. Break its stronghold, God. Break its ability. Break, Lord God, what the enemy is trying to do. Give us liberty, God. Give us understanding. Give us revelation, Lord God, that we might walk into the dimension that you would have us to walk into. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. With every battle, there will be a new way of fighting it. I sat alone the other day, sitting here, beginning to pray. Felt like God began to lead me in a particular direction. 
felt like he spoke some things into my spirit. And so we're going to go there just as quickly as we can. Now, I, I, what I need is I need someone to go with me and for you to not start going, oh God, here we go. If we understand that we fight not a natural war, but a spiritual war. So in fighting a spiritual war, we cannot use fleshly means. We need to understand that everything that happens, it happens for a reason and a purpose. You may not understand it right now, but it's going to happen for a purpose. When you start pressing forward, the enemy starts pressing back. The devil is very territorial. When Jesus begins to cast out the pigs and the Gadarenes, what do they say? Don't send us anywhere else. In fact, we'll be willing to hang out with some pigs as long as we can stay in the local area. So when you start taking new territory, when you start getting new people, when you start pressing for a new dimension, then what the enemy tries to do is push back in areas he knows you can be defeated in. If you're a drug addict, he's not going to tempt you with a pair of shoes. It ain't going to happen. It's going to tempt you with your favorite drug. If you fell away before, he's going to come back and say, hey, what about this over here? The problem with most of our yesterdays is we've never come to the place where we've defeated the enemy. We've only made a pact with him. Now, if you leave me alone, you don't got to go. But I just want to live for God over here. So just, I don't want, I, I don't think I can defeat you. But as long as you won't mess with me, it's going to be all right. So we get to the place of numericals. And we start dealing with old stuff. Now I'm just going to put you on the spot. Since... Y'all my people. How many of you have dealt with the same mess for way too long? Now, I know some of you ain't going to be honest with me. That's okay. I can go start putting my finger right on your nose. Hold your hand up. Don't, don't lie now. Come on. I'm right in the middle of preaching, dear God. You you've keep going back to the same areas. You keep bumping back on the same places. You keep saying, I got victory. Only when new territory starts being taken, you go, oh, wait a minute. And instead of going forward, we got to go backward and deal with some old stuff. But I've come to let someone know there is a God that's wanting to sever some head of some old giants in your life so you don't go back to them any longer. The only way you go back is to pick up a sword and say, I brought you down before. This is my testimony to bring you down again. Come on, you're going to pick up some swords of, of some giants you defeated and wave them right over your next devil you fight. Come on, Wharton. God has promised you revival. It's time to get in there and say, I'm starting with my devils from yesterday. I'm going to go over some old territory. The reason why we don't defeat them is because, number one, we're too lazy to deal with them. And number three, they're pets. Without well, you're being mean again. No, I'm not. Who, what's being meaner? You not gaining no territory? Or me just telling you like it is? Which one's meaner? Now, you pay your doctor to go tell you you're fat. You don't have a problem with him. Only fat people can say that. Skinny people can't say that. 
Made y'all laugh. Take a deep breath. We go, okay. He let up a little bit. Because remember, when I, as soon as you laugh, it's time to hit it again. So yesterday, or last, last week, I touched on when we become greater in our cause. This week, we're going in some new territory. Here's the problem. Oh, help me, Jesus. Here we go. Here's the problem. See, we already should have been into new territory. We got some new converts that are fighting devils you should have already defeated. I'm going to talk to Brother Webb because I know you ain't been here for 100 years, so I'm going to look at you when I say this. I'm not looking over there. So I'm going to say this very gently. No, I'm not saying gently. You can say yes all you want to. Now, I'm talking to you, okay? So I'm not talking to them. You, you, me and you, we, we got this down. Just come throw me an air fist, okay? If you're with me, all right. Here's the problem. You can say yes all you want to, but the fact that you haven't let go of some old devils lets me know you really don't mean it. So please don't say amen. Okay, I'm going to come preach up here. It's getting real quiet behind me. And I just felt a knife stab me in the back. We keep saying amen. We keep saying, oh yeah, Brother Alba, that's good. But the moment that you get off the altar, you still say, well, I'm still mad at so-and-so. I'm still not going to let go of so-and-so. I'm still not going to let go of some old stuff. Dear God, you've been fighting the same devil for 400 years. Why don't you grow up and say, devil, you're going to be under my feet and the next generation is not going to deal with you. The only thing they're going to know is what you... Is what used to be. It used to be this way, but not anymore. It used to be small, but not anymore. We used to struggle, but not anymore. We're in the middle of a revival. I want them to know, hey, this is how you beat some giants. This is how you beat unforgiveness. This is how you beat perversion. This is how you beat division. We fought the battle so you don't have to. If you're going to say amen, dear God, you better bury some old things and say I'm not digging them up any longer. I know what's in here. I ain't slept in almost two nights. I know what's here. I know what I'm fighting. Which means I know what you're hiding. You don't give it access, it can't hang around. Come out of that man. Uh, we ain't got nowhere to go. So it means if it's still here, you're holding on to it. How's that? Joshua? Yeah. Moses' time's come to an end. I need you to go take some territory. The revival I promised Moses is now transferred to you. Why well, couldn't Moses have it? Because all the people that he delivered were too busy worrying about yesterday instead of worrying about tomorrow. Who's going to help me out? I need someone to help me out. Where's there's a young man who likes me? Because they all looked at me funny last time. So, I, Brother Webb, come over here. Help me out. Stand right there for a minute. Over there is a land flowing of milk and honey. Over here is stripes on your back. Take your tie off from me, if you will. Unless, unless you're offended by taking off your tie. Then who won't? Over there... Our houses you did not build. Forgive me for doing this. Hopefully it won't hurt. Or we can remind you how it used to be. Over there is vineyards you did not plant. Over here is the abuse of yesterday. Over there is people receiving the Holy Ghost. Over here is you just hanging on. Oh my God. Hanging on to the old, old hurt feelings you used to have.
Over there is victory signs and wonders. Over here is you still dealing with the hatchet you ain't buried except in someone's back. Over there is blessing. Over here is gossip. Over there is victory. Over here is defeat. Dear God, where do you want to live? You want to live in Egypt? Or you want to go to where God has promised you he wants to send you? Dear God, it's time to cross the River Jordan and get your miracle and get your victory. See, some of you on this side, devils keep lying to you. I, I, I just felt it. Well, I ain't got victory yet. We're going to get there in a minute. See, see, Israel left Egypt. By the way, if they left, say with well, your pockets full. They went in, shepherds. They came out with gold and silver. They went in, slaves, they came out, set free. But it didn't take too long. Look what the Lord has done. Look what. Now you got you to think. God spent fleas, frogs, flies, boils. People start dropping dead because angels showed up. The tightwads Egyptians suddenly start giving them everything. The same ones who beat them were saying, sure, you want gold? Yeah, here you go. Clean out their bank accounts, clean out their 401k programs, giving it to Israel. They walk out healthy. They walk out with all their stuff. They walk out multimillionaires. And the moment they heard Egypt go, we're going to get them back. They start whining. See, the moment you hear the sound of chariot wheels bumping on rocks, stop whining that God's trying to kill you and start running to the Red Sea. Stop complaining, saying I didn't get my victory and get on the edge of the, of the Red Sea. Start going, nah, 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 nah. In about 30 seconds, uh, I'm going to watch you float down the river and I'm going to be set free uh, from what is trying to come against me. If God gave you the Holy Ghost, if God put you here, he intends for you to be victorious. Stop looking back to Egypt. So you, you can sit down, brother. Well, thank you. Just, just keep, keep the whip and don't go too far. Uh, you see, here, here, here's, here's the situation. And I, I probably said it here before, but when I read my Bible, I get irritated sometimes. Maybe you don't. I do. It irritates me sometimes. Especially when you start and you get to that place after, jo after Joseph and they get into the area and Moses brings them out. That's when my irritant irritation factor rises many, many degrees. He blessed them. He, now, I need you to think about this. They've been being beaten for 400 years. Four hundred years of back-breaking labor. Four hundred years of not enough food. 400 years of a whip constantly being laid upon them. 400 years of baking in the sun while their tormentors stood there and did not care if they died. Children being dumped in the Nile River. And when God brings them out, not one of them were carried except for Joseph's bones. They all walked out. Arthritis left. The stripes that used to bother them and couldn't straight up, they suddenly left. 
Not only did they leave, but all the time they were there, God blessed them with it, and it didn't take long before they got, they got more worried about what they were leaving behind than what they were getting. It irritates me. I get mad. I start thinking, what a bunch of stinking whiners. And then I think, and so are we. We're just as guilty. God brings us out. God delivers us. God gives us a word. God tells us we're set free. And we keep convincing ourselves that we're not really free like God said. You brought me out here to die. You think God's going to waste all that time doing all kinds of cool stuff just to let you die? If he brings you to a place that seems to be there's no way out and no hope, you need to start looking for your miracle. That's the difference in some of our elders. We wonder why it seems they never have problems. They don't have, it's not that they don't have problems. It's just instead of looking back into Egypt and complaining, they start going, okay, I'm about to wait for my miracle. I'm about to wait for God to show up. I'm not looking over there. I'm not listening. I want to hear you, Lord. I, I want you to tell me what to do. Oh, wait a minute. I hear the sound of a wind blowing on the Red Sea. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait. I know Egypt's coming behind me, but if I give God a chance uh, when I walk through the other side uh, there'll be nothing there to come after me ever again okay I gotta hurry I gotta hurry I gotta hurry here we go here we go they, they, they go from there God brings them all the way over and I got to get to this I got to get to this before I go on he brings them to he brings them to the edge of, of Jericho they get a great victory Absolute amazing victory. And we find an interesting portion of scripture. Because we find this guy named Achan. I'm going somewhere. Just give me a second. We find this guy named Achan. And Achan is an interesting passage of scripture. They lose at Ai. They've just taken down Jericho. I don't have time to go into this, but possibly it was the premier stronghold of that region. They just took it down, and all of a sudden they begin to lose. Ah, oh, here we go. Here, here we go. See, before they got there, the Bible said that they circumcised, or if you allow me not to go into too graphic detail, let's just say they circumcised the heart. Not of the flesh, but of the heart. Everybody else, listen to, listen to God. One dude pretended to be like everyone else. But the bottom line is he was more worried about himself than he was his people. What's going on, God? We just blew the doors off Jericho. We just won a great victory. What's going on, God? There's somebody with some stuff in here. What do, you, what do you mean? Is that why we lost? Yep. Stand him up. March him. Do, 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 do. Moses didn't know who it was. All of a sudden, God's like, oh, that's the tribe. Oh, that's the family. You want to know what tribe Achan was out of? Anyone know? You don't know? What tribe was it? Oh, I thought you raised your hand. It was the tribe of Judah. Guess what? All your shouting, hucking, and bucking, it don't mean nothing if you got stuff under the tent. That, that should tell you something, that you can fake it all you want, you can huck and buck all you want, and God's still saying, hey, I need you to clear that out. Hey, I need you to clear that out. I, I need you to clear that out. I don't know about you, but had it been me before it was all said and done, before I ever got there, I'd have been digging under my tent saying, Lord, uh, before you call me out, uh, I want to bring my stuff uh, and say I'm sorry. Uh, I want to repent. Uh, I want to be part of the revival. I want to be part of the breakthrough. Don't let anything hinder you from being used by God. Steady, 
just waiting. God ain't going to call me out. I'm going to be richer than everyone else. I got my stuff, thank you. I got my stuff hidden under the tent. You wait till we get to a big city, and I'm going to party hard. I got all kinds. The Bible said amongst the stuff under his tent. Now, words mean something. Amongst the stuff means there was more stuff under the tent than what God's telling us. But there were only three things that were important. Ready? Here we go. Silver always rep represents redemption. 200 shekels of silver, 200 pieces of silver. But the number 200 means insufficient. You can be redeemed at one point, but what you put under your tent, it becomes insufficient for you to be saved. But I thought once saved, always saved. That's your problem. It ain't once saved, always saved. It's once saved, you got the mark of God on you. You better get a hold of him and seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I know it's quiet. We're, we're about to, we're, we're almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost transitioning. Just give me a second. So it's, it's insufficient. When you pick back up stuff that you gave to God, it becomes insufficient. God, I want you to forgive me for all my mess, all my trauma, all my drama. I want you to forgive me for all this stuff. But oh, oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, she made me mad, Lord. She wore that big old red, 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 red flower on her thing. And, and he wore his pumpkin-colored shirt. And, 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 and the baby over there got that flower on. Because the reason why I'm saying this is most of the stuff we hold on to is dumb anyways. So I'm just going to be on it. And, and God, they, they stepped on my little bad toe. And, and God this and, and God that. And we're so busy digging a hole under our tent. God saying, hey, don't stop there. I got more for you. I got a greater victory. I'm going to give you land. I'm going to give you cities. I'm going to bless you abundantly. And we're more worried about our little tent. Insufficient redemption. The second one is a wedge of gold. Start reading into it. And most theologians believe it was a knife, you a golden knife used for idolatrous sacrifice. Now I gotta be careful because the moment I say this, when I get back to the quarters, I'm gonna hear about it. Why don't I give up my iPhone? Because most of our idols have to deal with I idols. I like doing that. I don't want to give that up. I like the way that makes me feel. I don't want to give that up. I don't care what man of God says. I don't, I don't want to give that up. See, when you start getting there, it don't matter how much scripture you piled on, you're still going to try to find a loophole to it. It's like trying to find a loophole through the side of a bank using a semi. Everyone knows you're wrong. It don't work that way. Well, I got my little knife, preacher. And if you don't make me feel good, I'm going to eye you right in the side. We're so busy judging everyone else with this little idolatrous idol. I can't believe Brother Webb shouted. That dude's so carnal. He, he, can't, he couldn't stand the stack of the Bible's looking at Jesus. Tell the truth. I can't believe so-and-so did that. They did this to me 300 years ago, and I'm still offended by it. I can't believe so-and-so. You know where they came from. You know where their past is from. I'm letting you know right now, we all have a past, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in our past. Uh, greater is the one that died and said, I give you life uh, that you might have life more abundantly. The one that said, uh, I'm going to cast your sin as far as the east is from the west. And if God is willing to do that, then far be it from me to start judging God's people. I want to put it under the blood and let God deal with my situation. So he, he's insufficient because he's now going to offer idols to, or, or sacrifice to other idols. And then the next one is a Babylonian garment. Babylon always represents religion. And I don't, mean, I don't mean true religion. I mean religion as a whole. 
Read the book of Revelation. You'll find out in the end. It talks about Babylon being the great harlot. Babylon religion. Religion. Held very loosely, by the way. Because Rastafarians are religion. Just a bunch of pot smoking dudes listen to reggae. But that's a religion. There's a religion that is literally with the government. It's the great spaghetti monster religion. I know you think I'm kidding. I'm dead serious. But there's another portion to the religiosity that is the Babylonian garment. There's two portions. One of them you see is the religion itself. The second one you really see come to fruition in the book of Revelation when it's the political agenda of what's going on. How many of us serve God with an agenda? Oh, it's getting real quiet. We're, we're, almost, we're almost there. We're almost at AI. Just give me one second. We're almost there. We're almost with the Gibeonites. Just give me one second. I'm going to hurry. Thank God he gave me a long time to preach. I might just use it all in this. Just remember, you're going to get every, every dime he pays me, I'm going to preach to you about it. He, 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 he said, when we start worrying about what pastor won't let us do and what, well, I preach better than so-and-so. Well, I sing better than so-and-so. I'll play Brother Webb with backwards. I, and pastor keeps using him. How? <sighs> then we've forgotten that it's... We're supposed to be servants. Take off your Babylonian garment and wrap a towel around your waist and start saying, God, what can I do to be used in the kingdom? Oh, it's getting real quiet right now. God, if I got to wash someone's feet, I'll wash their feet. If I got to go clean the nursery, I'll clean the nursery. If I got to mow the lawn, I'll mow the lawn. I'm just going to be used by you. And if you place yourself in a place that God can use you, then when God needs someone to be used, he'll say, that's the one I want over there. That's the one working over there. When he was looking for a new king, he was looking for a shepherd boy that was in the field, not worrying what the brothers were doing, not worrying that the prophet didn't see him. He was working where God placed him and God said that's the one I can use okay here we go now with all that being laid let's move over they've now taken down AI and years ago Joshua was bumping along having a good time some dudes showed up called the Gibeonites Dwellers of the hills. They came from the tribe, if, if one theologian's right, the tribe of the Hivites, which were villagers with no walls. The Gibeonites came and they fooled them into making an allegiance with them. And now that these people were going to serve Israel, five kings of the local area, the Ammonite coalition is what it's called. Begins to say, you know what? We need to get rid of the Gibeonites before they join our enemies. And five kings of the Amorite coalition rose up together to go after the Gibeonites. Now, I cannot prove it, and I'm not preaching it as doctrine, but I think they were really after Israel, but they were using this as a way to open the door because Israel marched all night long the Bible says how many, how many of you like to have to fight after marching all night long that's where God begins to throw hailstones and God begins to throw down all these things to destroy the enemy so desperate was Joshua. See, Joshua had an understanding. And now I'm almost to the end. Joshua had an understanding. It was this. If I ever let these kings 
loose for even one night. I'm going to have to face them again. You know why we keep facing them? Because as soon as the pressure gets off, we stop trying to destroy them. Now what I'm about to say, and make some of you mad, you may not agree with me, but that's all right. I know what I felt in prayer. Perversion is more than how we usually label it. We always talk about the dirty old man as the pervert. That is a good definition, but that's not the only definition. Perversion is anything which twists the true intent of something into something else. In other words, if I use your glasses, instead of reading, I try to use them as a shovel. I perverted the intent of the glasses. Now that is a very shallow, rough term, but it is there. And we pervert grace. We pervert mercy. We pervert scripture into making it what it feels good. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. When you start allowing the spirit of perversion to come in, it will start branching out into its other forms. And you will begin to fight even a physical, sensual perversion. But how, how do you know if it's there? Because you usually start fighting even when it was never, you, you, you're, not even, you're not thinking about it. You're just all of a sudden. And you go, ah, okay. See what you're doing. I know what I battle all Saturday night going into Sunday. It's there. King of division. Why? Because the moment God begins to say, it's time. Now, I, you, you, you're not mad at me. You're not mad at me, are you? Okay, stand up with me. Okay, help me out of here. You don't have to go too far. Okay, turn, turn, look where we're looking. We're going we're gonna to fight. The moment God starts saying, take territory. There's an old spirit that comes. and psst. That fat preacher, he was, he was talking about you the other day. He was preaching right at you. He blinked twice when he looked at you. That was like a code for everyone to know that you're a bad person. Spirit of witchcraft, it's already there. It's there in many forms. Spirit of Santeria here. Spirit of drugs are in the city. Witchcraft is full blown. What were some other things that I had, I had to find? Unforgiveness. Self-righteousness. You, you know self-righteousness. When you can do the sin, and it's okay, but no one else can. Selfishness. Selfishness. When it's all about me, an ambition, which is I want to be seen and if i have to undermine someone to get there that's okay i'll do whatever it takes kings that have been around for a long long time possibly i don't know how long this church has been here possibly longer than you've even been here You came in and start fighting things that you don't even know where they're at. You picked up things that you, you never had to deal with before. And somewhere, we need to get the mentality of Joshua. God, I don't want to go any further. 
until what I'm battling is absolutely destroyed. Okay, I'm about to get there right now. Some of you just waiting. See, when we finally make up our mind, I'm not going nowhere until this thing is dead and I'm tired of being here. I'm tired of being where we're at. I'm tired of staying here. I'm tired of going around this same mountain. God, I'm not moving until my enemy's gone. And you say it's time to go forward. I'm not going to let it sit there. I'm not going to let it hide. I'm not going to let it pretend that it's going to be under my feet. I want it dead. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't let it stay here any longer. Don't let it live with you any longer. Don't let it control you any longer. You need to decide. I'm going to kill what's trying to destroy me. I want everyone to clap your hands right now to the Lord. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord right now. Clap your hands to the Lord right now, everybody. Okay, sit down. I got to get, get, get ready. Get ready, music person. Get ready. Because Brother Webb will let me use him. I'm going to use him. See, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes we, get it, we get it all wrong. Oh, but pastor's mad at me. Here, hang on to that. Pastor's mad at me. Why, why, pastor preach, why, why is this fat dude preaching like that? See, what it is is that somewhere a king got a hold of you. And you, you don't even realize sometimes you're doing it. He's just tugging you along. Just pulling you along. Just, just, just dragging you along. He's been in control for a long time. And so you've gotten so used to the sway of another king. That before you know it, you're like, I didn't want to be here. And you get on your face and you pray and you pray until you feel a little bit of relief and you get back where you know God wants you to be. And what does the king do? The Bible says that when Joshua started winning, and Joshua said, sun stands still, moon stands still. Basically, we're not going any further until something's dead. The kings took off and they ran in high. They ran and hid. Bible says that they went to a cave and all the five kings were hiding their ugly little heads just waiting for Joshua and Israel to chill out a little bit so they could go back to work again. See, the enemy's names mean this. And just because of time's sake, I'm not going to try to pronounce all of them. But the king of, of Jerusalem, it literally means the Lord of lightning or a vision of peace. Now you can say peace all you want to. You're trying to kill God's people? It ain't peace. Hoam, the king of Hebron, his name means woe unto them. Now watch this. How would you like a friend whose name means woe unto you and his name means friendship? Think about it. Who's that dude? Oh, man, I care. Well, unto them. He's like, hey, let's be buddies. Param, king of, of Jarma. His name means a wild, and I'm going to say it in my terminology. Forgive me. I know it's not biblical, but it's the same word. A wild donkey of them. The city name means fearing, throwing down, and death. Be careful when you start listening to the donkeys. Who could make a good donkey noise? Anybody? Any, any guys make a good donkey noise? Nobody? Brother Webb, you're up, buddy. Can you make good donkey noise? You can make good donkey noise. Say it for me. Come on, try it. Try it. Make a loud donkey noise. Come on, say it. Hurry. Good, good. Go get a microphone real quick. Hurry up and turn this mic on real fast. Hurry up. I got to hurry. It's time for me. I got to close. We got to, we got to, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Make a donkey noise. 
Yeah. Good. Hang, hang on yeah. a second. Hang on. We're going to have revival. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to fill someone with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be united. Yeah. Yeah. We listen to so many donkeys in our lives, and God is trying to say, hey, that one's going to lead you to destruction. That one's going to lead you to death. You better shut your ears to the things of the world. And if they're doing anything but saying revival, you need to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to follow the man of God in my life. I'm going to follow a movie of the Spirit. I don't care what the devil says. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. Good donkey there. Good donkey there. I'm almost done. Japha, king of Lachish. Oh, you, you might not like this one, but here it is. His name means enlightening. But see, he messed up because he lived in the city of who walks and exists of himself. It's in the Bible. When someone has an enlightenment and they're not walking with the man of God, you better run. That's a king who's trying to destroy you. See, y'all think I lost my mind. By the way, I wrote this message. Not, this is about the third time I preached it. He walks and insists by himself. I don't need a man of God. Hey, won't you listen to my, my doctrine? I'm enlightened. I'm enlightened too. He will give you pastors after his own heart. I'm enlightened too. This word will not go back void. I'm enlightened too. Because I'm in the book and the book will not lie. And the last one is deeper. His name means an orator or a word. But it's literally his name means to go around and around and around. Some kings are happy just to say enough to get you to go in circles, but never get a breakthrough. <sighs> now, now we're going to move to where we need to move. But here's the thing. I've peeled back some layers. And what really is going to make the decision is whether or not you're ready to kill some things off. I need everyone to clap your hands to the Lord right now. While you're doing that, can you lift your voice right now? And begin to pray, God, we need deliverance. God, we need a breakthrough. God, we need a touch of your spirit. God, we need some things to die, Lord God, that we will never face them again. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. You may be seated real quick, I'm almost done. Joshua locks them up long enough to get some work done. And then Joshua comes. Now I, I need I need a I need a skinny dude to help me out. Which one of you want to help me out? Yeah, smallest dude. Will you help me out, buddy? I'm sorry. The rest of them they look like they were scared of me. Joshua goes to a cave. Come up here, Baba. Now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need you to lay down for a minute, okay? <laughs> Joshua goes up and he calls. Joshua doesn't do it himself. He calls the princes of Israel. Those in the church house. And he drags these five kings. I need you to fall on the ground like I threw you down. No, I need you to go that way, Bubba. I need you to go that way. Lay down. There you go. That way. There you go. Forgive me, okay, for what I'm about to do. And he brings the princes. He says, put your foot on their neck. And he says, so shall God do to your enemies. 
when Joshua finally got fed up and he said, sun, stand still. Moon, don't move. I got to win a battle. I got to kill something off. I don't want to face them again. Then God began to say, hey, I want you to call them out. I want you to dig them out. I want you to stand on them and say, you're not going to see them again. And everyone else like them, I'm going to give you the victory over the things that are trying to destroy your life. Oh, I wish someone would get excited right now. That king that's been hurting me. That king that's been messing with me. That king that's kept me from being used. God's letting me know. It's under your feet. It's under your feet. It's under your feet. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't let the sun go down tonight. Don't let the moon go down tonight until you destroy what's been trying to hinder revival. <laughs> clap your hands to the Lord right now. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. You may be seated just for a moment longer. We got some bare altars here. Just one or two took me seriously. There's some people that you got some kings there. We prayed you through again and again and again. And again. Now I, I don't know anything, so I'm just gonna step out of here way out in left field. But I don't think I'm gonna miss it. Pastors put you in position, had to remove you from position. He put you in there and had to take you out. Maybe they got it this time. And you start letting and all of a sudden that king rises up. Oh, not today. And you get into a service like we started having and it starts running for the cave. And you say, maybe I defeated it. No, 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 see, I haven't defeated it yet. Sometimes you've got to get into a dark place along with God. Forgive me, brothers. You got to get in there and you got to say, no, not, not, not this time. Not this time. I'm going to drag you out of where you're trying to hide. And I don't care if anyone sees what's going on, but I'm about to put you on an altar right there. And before it's all said and done, I'm taking the word of the spirit and I'm going to sever your head from your body. And when I leave this place, I'm going to know that I got a victory once and for all. So will God do to your enemies. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're about to go. Y'all gonna think I'm crazy. Someone, someone's addiction to alcohol is trying to let loose right now. I, ju I just smelt that. Come by by. Someone's addiction to alcohol is getting afraid right now. It's starting to try to hide right now. It's trying to run a little bit right now. There's some things that have been going on in your spirit. It's starting to let loose right now because someone is about to make up their mind. I'm going to fall. I get up from that altar. I'm not going to get up until I know God has destroyed that thing that's trying to hinder me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The atmosphere is right. Spirit of victory is here. Faith is in the house. But see, you're going to have to make up your mind now. Either I'm going to let it hide a little longer in the cave. 
or I'm about to talk to God and see some things destroyed. It was after they took the Amorite coalition that they were able to take the northern kingdoms. They had great victories when they decided, God, I'm not going to let anything stay in my life. I'm going to destroy it. And I'm going to do it tonight. With every head bowed and with every eye closed, I wonder how many people, to be honest, there's a few kings running around, and I know that God's not pleased. But it seems like Every time I try to get a victory, I hear the voice of something I thought I had victory over come back again. If that's you, I want you to slip your hand up. Every, no one's looking. It's between you and God. This is between you and the Lord. This is a decision you're going to have to make. Either I get victorious tonight or I'm just going to keep going over again and again same things I thought God delivered me from. With every head bowed, I'm going to give somebody just a little bit longer opportunity. Come on, there's some things you need to know need to die tonight. I want you to slip your hand in the air. Come on, there's some sisters I'm waiting for. There's some brothers I'm waiting for. Come on, there's some of you. I know exactly who you are. You need to make up your mind tonight. There's some things that are going to be destroyed. I want you to lift both hands in the air. And I want you to begin softly to pray. Heavenly Father, right now in the next few moments, I'm about to open these altars up, Lord God. Lord God, there's been some things that have been peeled back. There's been some things that have been called out. Lord, there's some in this house they're wanting to go to that next place in you. There's some, Lord God, they're battling within their own self even now. Trying to convince yourself that they have it all under control. But God, I feel that convicting power and I see that battle that they're raging right now. Lord, in the next few moments, I pray that you will bring deliverance. I pray that you would loose your people, Lord God. From some holds of some kings that have held them hostage. That they can walk into that new dimension, Lord. That the battle, God, that has been waging in this church will come to a stop. And the people will go to a victory. And harvest in And the harvest that you were wanting to give will come to fruition I open these altars right now I wonder if you can be bold enough to bring this thing to the altar I wonder if you can go into war long enough but you're not going to wait till you feel a little better you're going to wait until you know I have control in victory over this enemy no more division frustration no more worrying about yesterday no more backbiting no more gossip no more bitterness against those that have done me wrong no you see I got it under my feet and God has promised me that I'm going to win a victory I wonder if someone can find a place to get on your face before God Lord, I'm not getting up until I know. Come on, revival church. Come on, miracle working church. Come on, get on your face right now. Get down before the Lord right now. under my feet it's under my feet when 
I get up, it's time for unity. When I get up, it's time for miracles. When I get up, it's time for new territory. Come on, ma'am, come on, sir, lift your voice. Come on, it's war time. Come on, it's war time. Come on, it's war time.
war is over. I'm not going to finish until I feel God. Let me go. I want this battle. Come on. Come on, say to God. Let this be a turning point. Let this be a transition night. I want to transition from where I've been all this time to where God is coming to me. I'm not going to get weary. I'm not going to stop too soon. Time stands still until I get my victory. Service stands still until I know. Until I know God is giving me the victory I desire. Come on, cry out. Come on, cry out. That's where you'll get your victory. I'm putting it on the altar, God. I'm laying it on the altar, God. Separate me from my yesterday. Separate me from my adversary. I plead your blood. I plead your blood.
church family, I want you to stand with me, if you will, across the sanctuary. If you will, get close to somebody. We're going to pray one more prayer, and I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. Come on, grab a hand to somebody and begin to pray right now. Come on, grab a hand to somebody and begin to pray right now. That's it, come on, that's it, come on. That's it, come on. That's it, come on, that's it, come on. That's it, come on. Pray, 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 pray. That's it, come on, press. 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 You thought devil, but we're going to have revival. You thought devil, but we're going to have unity. Come on, sister, come on, brother, press a little bit. Walk into it. Walk into it. Come on, walk into it with faith. Walk into it swinging your sword. Walk into it knowing I'm about to walk out victorious. Come on, we're back where we started. We're back where we started. Press. Press right now. Press in the dimension. Press understanding. There are some things that are being destroyed even right now. And I'm not stopping until I know they're no longer moving.
Okay, I want everyone to listen to me real quick. I know we're praying. I want everyone to listen to me real quick. Sometimes you're just going to have to call it out. You don't call it out like it's bigger than you call it like David did. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I want us to begin to pray one more time. I want everyone that you can. I want you to link hands all across this building. Everyone that you can. When we go into prayer this time, I want you to begin to call some things out. Whatever it is that you've been facing, unforgiveness, division, whatever it may be, maybe it's perversion, maybe the devil's trying to convince you that you can live for God another way. I want you to start taking dominion. God, I take dominion over that spirit right now. God, I'm going to live for you whatever it will cost. God, I want you to sever it out of my life that I don't have to face it again. I wonder in the church of living God, you can lift your eyes. Come on. There is something moving in here that's going to change the atmosphere of the church. Come on, begin to pray right now. I bind that strong man. I bind that spirit. I bind that king of this world that is trying to stop the revival in my city. Come on, bind it right now. And when you're done, I want you to start thanking God. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving me the victory right now. Come on, there's victory in this house. Uh, come on, there's victory in this house. Uh, come on, there's power in this house to be delivered, uh, to be set free. Uh, the devil's getting kicked out of some marriages. Uh, the devil's getting kicked out of some homes. Uh, come on, we're beginning to take back uh, what God has promised us. Uh, we're making up in our mind uh, that the kings of this world uh, are going to dominate our house uh, one more day. Uh, one more hour, one more second. Uh, I believe we got the victory uh, that we're stepping into a new dimension uh, of revival, uh, of harvest. Uh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, in Jesus' name. 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 I'm determined to follow Jesus. I'm not going to turn back. I don't want to go back to Egypt. I'm determined to go to the promised land. Come on, somebody, I'm getting a made-up mind. Devil, you ain't taking me back anymore. The Lord delivered me from that. I'm not going back. But I'm going to my promised land. I'm going to where God has blessing for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Brother Thomas, I'm a one God, apostolic, tongue talking, Holy Ghost, heaven bound believer. Liberated by the power of Jesus' name. I've been set free at an altar on my knees. And I suggest you do the same. <laughs> Come on. I believe in holiness. I believe in holiness. It may be going out of fashion other places, uh, but it ain't going out of fashion around here. I don't want to go back to the world. I don't want to look like the world. I don't want to act like the world. God drew me out of the world, and I don't want to go back to Egypt. I want to go to the promised land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the spirit of victory. So here's, here's what we're going to do, church. I'm encouraging everybody that can't be at prayer meeting Tuesday night. When you go into your house tonight, and that king wants to raise his head, you just look at that king and say, you're gone. I'll put you under tonight. And when those old carnal spirits try to come back and say, oh, we have dominion over you, you just kick them out and say, uh-uh. Come on, the message this morning and the message tonight were parallel. Time to kick the wolf out of the house. Time to get rid of the kings in your house so we can have a move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now we have something very special. If you will allow me quickly, if you'll return to your seat. Amen. I am thankful tonight for the move of God. Aren't you glad we don't have to follow a schedule? Aren't you glad we don't have to follow a schedule? Aren't you glad the Holy Ghost can move in? even before offering time, and we can just say, you know what, let's have preaching right now. Because that's the order of the Lord. Can we give the Lord some praise? Now, a few weeks ago, Brother Elliot, Brother Elliot rudely interrupted my preaching. <laughs> 